you've been hanging around aviation very long, you probably remember the day when the typical conception of a small airplane was this, a Piper Cub. I don't know, sometime maybe in the 80s or early 90s, that changed, and now the typical person's conception of a small airplane is nothing. Didn't they outlaw you guys after 9-11? Well, not quite, but stay tuned. But you know what? Sometimes when I attend a party, people making small talk will find out I have an airplane, and I'll explain that it's a Piper Cub, and they'll ask, well, do you, like, make trips to New York and stuff? <laughs> I have to laugh because I have to explain that, well, no, you know, the Piper Cub is just a little too slow for that. And even for people in aviation who've never had direct experience with an old tail drag or a pre-war or post-war airplane, they really don't have a sense of uh, lack of speed, shall I say. So some of my friends will say, well, you, you can fly the Cub across the state, right? Not really. Well, how slow is that thing? It's dog shit slow. I'll give you an example. If you are a keen or even a casual observer of photographic lighting conditions, you'll probably sense that I'm flying into the sun. So it's about 8.30 on a beautiful Saturday morning here in Florida. And I'm supposed to be flying northeast. I topped the Cub off and I was heading up to Zephyr Hills to visit with my skydiving peeps. And when I leveled off at my cruising altitude of flight level 005, the ground speed was 22 knots. It's 71 nautical miles from Venice to Zephyr Hills. So even I could do that math in my head. That was going to be a uh, three hour leg in an airplane with two and a half hours of fuel. And even I don't have the patience to do a fuel stop on a 71 mile cross country. So the first thing I did is what any self-respecting pilot would do. I went into denial. This can't be right. It must be an anomaly in the GPS. So I turned around and noticed a 94 knot ground speed. It obviously wasn't an anomaly. The winds have been forecast to be out of the east at 9 knots, which is doable in this airplane. They turned out to be 25 knots off the nose. So some days you're the bug, some days you're the windshield. Interestingly, it's only the second time in my flying career that I have canceled a trip for winds of loss. Coincidentally, and to show you that things go full circle, the first time was in another Piper. I was flying from Connecticut to Chicago in an Archer, and I encountered 86 knot headwinds over Pennsylvania. And I got over Lock Haven, Pennsylvania, which is where this airplane was made in 1938. My ground speed was 26 knots and I determined that my next fuel stop was 30 miles behind me. So I turned around and spent the night at Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It's the first and last time I'd ever seen 200 knots of ground speed in a Piper Archer. Sometimes this aviation magic really works, but not today. Cheers.